independence. We hope that his bail application can be heard. We have the cases of our two MPs, Honorable Nixon Chilangwa yeah. and Honorable Stotela, yeah. uh, with council chairperson and three other people that are locked up in Mukoveko uh, maximum prison. Again, they've, you know, they've appealed against those decisions, the sentences and conviction, and they've applied for bail. The bail in the high court was uh, uncharacteristically denied, and uh, uh, I think our lawyers are grappling with that matter. There's never a time where a bail application pending appeal can be denied, but in this case of the two MPs, it was denied. They are not flight risk, they are current sitting members of parliament, and why use the both judicial and uh, 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 correction facilities to, to punish and imprison them. Of course the target we know is political, to target their seats, to have their seats declared vacant so that there could be by-elections in those areas where the UPND are interested in. Yeah. So that's a state from the side of the party. It's not a wonderful site and we have uh, various people locked up, you know, especially on cyber security and cyber crimes act issues of speech where they are declaring everything as hate speech, they are declaring everything as sedition, they are declaring everything as inciting. And uh, uh, we, we have many people that are young cyber, uh, our bloggers that are affected by that. We have a case where the ordinary woman, Mayuma Elizabeth uh, Chakubabe from Chingola was picked from Chingola as if there are no courts in Chingola, as if there is no police in Chingola. She, co she allegedly committed the offense in Chingola. She issued a voice note in her own house in Chingola. Why transport her under the cover of the night? And no female police, just these men in two vehicles carrying a woman the whole night from Chingola to Lusaka. It's that, those issues that uh, we are grappling with. And this is not just the case of the Patriotic Front. You are aware Socialist Party President Fred Member is in court, again facing various charges of sedition or hate speech or whatever they are manufacturing at every turn. And uh, other member, Sean Tembo, is facing various charges again of, of speech, nothing else but related to speech. But that's the state of uh, the, the country. When we say there's a shrunken democratic space, this is what we mean. When we say there is a dictatorship reigning, this is what we mean. When we say there is an autocratic government and a dictator running the country, this is what we mean. And it's, it's uh, it, it, for us, the media, I must say, that uh, much as we are so independent and we are, uh, we, we are, we are obviously saving, uh, uh, we have saved different governments, political, party in gov political parties and governments in and out, we have basically not seen a difference in what you are complaining about. We have seen it under the MMD, we have seen it under the Patriotic Front, and we are seeing, for us, this is, 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 is normal routine in as far as um, the application of the law or misapplication of the law, uh, it's still the same. And, and I meant to believe that we will see the same. I mean, we'll see the UPND when they're out of power complain as well what would be happening. I, mean, I think we, they complained, and they complained the most at the time they were in opposition. And I think we also saw this when the Patriotic Front was in opposition. They complained a lot, and we saw arrests of uh, uh, Mr. Michael Sata. A number of, 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 of issues used to arise. It looks like it's a it's normal life now. I mean, we, we have to understand that there will always be complaints when law is applied. Unfortunately, the politicians are not listening from Zambians. Zambians don't want political violence. Zambians don't want the opposition harassed. Zambians want the opposition to freely campaign, freely air their alternative policies and budgets. They want uh, the, a, a thriving opposition to challenge the sitting government. Zambians want an independent parliament. Zambians want an independent judiciary. Zambians want an executive that is working. The reasons the MMD was voted out was issues of corruption, application of the rule of law, or misapplication of the rule of yeah. law, abuse of uh, public order act. One of the reasons the PF lost power is exactly again those yeah. same, same issues, yeah. issues of political violence, cadarism, allegations of corruption, arrogance, 
the PF. We voted out of power. It's so, it's so incredible to see the UPND on table charge repeat the mistakes of both the MMD and the PF. It's like their, their memory is so short-sighted. They've forgotten what Zambians wanted from them. Zambians wanted peace, want, wanted security, wanted national development. They wanted a thriving democracy. They wanted a, a free press. They wanted a, a thriving social media space. The UPND think that they have to do worse than what UNIP did. Lock people up, threaten people up, uh, detain people up, and uh, uh, abandon the economy while people suffer. So it's, it's so regrettable that they can't learn from history. If there should be any better president this country should ever have, it should be President Hakainde Ichilema. Because he's expected to learn from the mistakes and challenges of Dr. Kaunda, from the mistakes and challenges of Frederick Chiluba, from the mistakes and challenges of Levi Mwanawasa, from the difficulties of Rupia Banda, from the challenges of Michael Sata, from the mistakes of Edgar Lungu. Now this man on table charger, on steroid, is repeating double the mistakes. How can you have a president fire seven judges in a period of three years? Something that has never happened in the last 60 years. How can you have a president so careless, ignore the law? How can but, you have but, a president, but, but, but how can you have a president he abandon? Would be, he would be a bad president if he doesn't act on recommendations of the JCC, for example. Oh, so let's talk about that. He will be a stubborn president if he doesn't act on recommendations. No. So uh, the dictatorship is arising that he manufactures those complaints. Moses Kalonde, who filed that complaint, is a surrogate of state house. He's been used in various cases against Edgar Lungu and others, including Joseph Malangi and Rafael Nakachinda. He's a surrogate of state house. So the complaint is manufactured by state house. And I'm looking forward to one of our lawyers, constitutional lawyers, to pursue this matter. Because when the Judicial Complaints Commission was established by the, uh, uh, the 2016 Constitution, it doesn't have an enabling law to actualize it. What they are using is an old law, the 1969 law called Judicial Complaints Authority. The JCC is supposed to have its own enabling law. Remember, under that law which they are using, you are required to have a tribunal of less than three judges to hear a complaint. No tribunal has been set up, but that's what the Judicial Complaints Authority calls for. The JCC has no powers. That Vincent Malambo and his people have no powers to hear a complaint from, from the judges. Their role is they don't have adjudicating powers. They can't be judges. They are, they are mere commissioners. So someone must test this process in court. Because you have a JCC created by the 2016 um, a constitution yeah. utilizing an enabling legislation uh, um, uh, called the Judicial Complaints Authority of 1969, I think, which called for, before recommendations are made, you needed to go to a full trial before a bench of judges. Vincent Malambo is not a judge. Eva Jala, is, there are no judges. Where are they drawing their adjudicating powers? That's why you can find within a period of one week they would receive complaint, determine the complaint, and have judges fired. So it's just the dictatorial process by the president who is ignoring the law, uh, who is uh, abandoning the law, and who's taking advantages of weaknesses like the lacuna I've just told you in relation to the JCC, which doesn't have an enabling law. Similarly, the, the public protector is paralyzed because the public protector is a new law. The enabling law is that it was an administrator general. And how do you balance the two? How do you balance the, that, that transformation? You need an enabling so law. So how is, how is the setup different from under the PF of the JCC, for example? It was the same, no? So or we it are saying... It judges as well. Uh, uh, it didn't have, but all it could do was to recommend. When a complaint comes, it would process a complaint, and then it, it's supposed to refer the matter to, to, to a tribunal by high court judges to determine and hear the matter. Then such recommendations are then taken to the president for action. In this case, Vincent Malambo and Eva Jala sitting. Uh, as, you know, and you uh, are saying that is 
how it's supposed to be done. But that, no, what is supposed not, to be done? That did not take place yeah, during what, your regime. No? What, what is supposed to be done? After we established a new creature in the constitution yeah. called the Judicial Complaints Commission, we are supposed now to do an enabling law, go to parliament, so that then we can spell out its powers, we can spell out its processes and procedures of how to attend to these complaints from the judiciary. That hasn't happened. Instead, we are relying, because this, this complaint process used to be there under the Judicial Complaints Authority. That was before that an authority under, you know, under this a subsidiary legislation. But now we want a competent, clear, transparent judiciary Hence, the 2016 created the Judicial Complaints Commission, among other commissions, to promote professionalism, independence. Remember, we, we, we had to put other, other commissions in, uh, in the Constitution, such as Teacher Service Commission. We had to put Civil Service Commissions. This is to foster um, independence, to promote uh, uh, professionalism. That's why even the, even the, the JCC was created again with that view in mind. But we are supposed to create enabling legislation, the Teacher Service uh, Commission Act, uh, you know, just like that. Yeah. We had to change the prison from what it was to a correction facility. Again, you are supposed to provide for it. I gave an example of uh, the... Was this an oversight or you basically ignored and you never thought uh, this thing would have uh, future effects? No, 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 no. Uh, legislation because, is... Uh, because then seven years since it was uh, the, the, the 2016 uh, constitution was put in place, seven years down the line, you did nothing about such uh, ambiguities. No, no, no. In the constitution, usually you provide for what are called transitional clauses as so, uh, so that the gaps are not there. But within a short period, you should provide for proper legislation. Mm. Uh, you have, um, uh, for example, w where you can have dual citizenship, Okay, we provided for it in the constitution. Again, we're supposed to legislate and enabling legislation how to act that out. If you have seen, there are challenges and difficulties in effecting the dual citizenship clause, which is provided for now as a matter of right in the constitution, but you're supposed to enable it with enabling legislation. I've just given you an example of um, the public protector. That institution is supposed to be the most powerful law enforcement yeah. institution. It is the only one that has, uh, from where we are getting it as an ombudsman, either from South Africa, UK, yeah. or where, it's the only one that can walk into state house and ask the president questions. You are alleged to be corrupt on the mines. You are alleged to be corrupt on fertilizer. You are alleged to be corrupt on procurement of oil. You are alleged to be corrupt. What is your answer, Mr. President? No law enforcement agency has powers to question the president. In fact, not even his ministers, they need to get permission from the president. But the public protector is the only one. And you understand why they are failing to provide for the enabling legislation. Because it's supposed to be the most powerful to, to keep the executive accountable. But they would rather that is paralyzed, not provided for, and they will not bring to sight any law enabling the public protector. And, but they will abuse the JCC, which is using an old law to then intimidate the judiciary and whip them into line that you can be fired even for your own judgment, that you can be fired for tendering your legal opinion on a matter, that you can be fired for doing your job. President Ichilema has managed to whip the judiciary into line. They are now like the attorney general. They are now advising presidents. They are now acting what president wants. It's no longer a judiciary that should be independent, that should be fair, objective, and that can deliver justice in this country. So at the altar of justice for this country, what has died is a judiciary. Let's get to uh, the economy uh, side of things. And, uh, and I think let's start from the fact that uh, the 2025 national budget has been presented. Uh, and I'm sure you took keen interest in, in just uh, uh, looking at uh, what would be of interest, where uh, it's inadequate and where it's adequate. What is your making of the budget? Uh, first of all, this is supposed to be their most practical budget, the last budget before we go to elections. And this government has failed and failed lamentably the last three years. 
the 2025 budget is supposed to bridge the gaps, ensure that the economy recovers, ensure that, uh, uh, that they are going to an election. In full employment, you know, uh, with an economy doing well, and with various uh, services, public services provided for. But uh, it, it is a disaster. Nothing will come out of that budget. First of all, the deficit has grown. The borrowings have grown. This government continues to rely on borrowings. And it says that it will draw 80% uh, of um, its budget from domestic resources. Which domestic resources will they get from? From an, a, a, an economy that is collapsing? Look, 2022, 2023, they pro projected that the economy will, will grow around 4.7. They revised it to about 2.2%. They did the same in the 2023, 2024. They projected that the economy will grow by 4.5%. By the end of the year, Msokotwane had revised the growth to 2%. And now he had projected, despite the, the lag in the last two years, that the economy will grow by 4.7%. It has not. The IMF just issued a statement last week. Is it early this week? where they stated the revised economy that the impact of drought and the lack of power to the country, it will not grow beyond 1.2%. So where will Musokotwane get 80% of revenue from our people? This is a government that has abandoned collecting taxes from the mining sector. They abandoned the mineral royalty tax, which was non-deductible. They made it deductible, literally optional. The income from the mines has dropped from $1.1 billion in 2019, in 2020 and 2021 to barely uh, $300 million. So there is gloom ahead of us. They are relying on grants and budget support from Europe, from America, from UK, uh, with a begging ball, for, you know, using the drought as an excuse. And I have to be very clear, they are using the drought as an excuse. How is it an excuse? It's an excuse because, because the drought is not of anyone's making. Yes, you plan for it. If the Egyptians could plan for drought, so many for for, for, for you know uh, for for what can I say? Four thousand years ago, the Egyptians could plan for drought of seven years. We can't plan for drought of one year. The Patriotic Front did plan for this drought because when we suffered the worst drought in 30 years in 2015. They said you are going to have another drought in the next 10 years, 2023-2024. By 2020, you saw the PF begin to stockpile maize. And by the time, from 2019, by the time we we're going to an elections, we had a, a, a national strategic maize reserves of three years stockpile, 1.5 million metric tons. Because we knew one of the worst drought was knocking on our door. We were warned in 2015 that your, your worst drought is coming in the next 10 years. What did our brothers do? As soon as they came in office, they couldn't believe the amount of maize they found. And they began to export and export and export. They depleted the 2021 strategic maize reserves. Even the bumper harvest that we had provided for, because by the time we're going to elections in August 2021, Fertilizer had been distributed on all districts, provinces, chief domes, up to the level of constituencies. And when we went to that election, you saw the bumper harvest that, was, that came in 2022. Our brothers thought this is bumper harvest from heaven. They didn't know that it was planned for. And they proceeded to export everything. Now they are embarrassing themselves, putting out begging balls in Europe, in America, they've just gotten a subvention of $500 million from a loan, by the way, from the IMF. They're using it as an excuse. When our dear brother, the managing director at Zesco, was signing these agreements with NAMPOWER of Namibia, with Botswana and Power Corporation, with South Africa, we warned him, stop these exports, conserve water. The Zambezi River Authority has warned you that we have one of the worst drought in the, in the last hundred years. And instead of the normal allocation of water that we give you, we're going to give you barely three quarters, I think a half of what they usually allocate. But no, 
Her brothers at Zesco were running the machines at full throttle, despite the technical warning, the expert warning, despite professionals warning them. Imagine if Zesco had instituted three-hour load shedding from when we got the warning in, in um, 2023. We could afford three hours load shedding, and we could have then used less water. But no, Zesco said, no, no, they needed to pay the bill of... Uh, 1.5, 1.7 billion dollars that Zesco was, was owing. Yeah. And therefore they needed to ramp up the export so that they could liquidate. Now Zesco is scrambling with huge power import bills. They will likely go to a bigger debt than the one they found. Because now they have to import power at commercial rate from Mozambique, from, from South Africa. Power we cannot afford. Remember, we ran out of water far earlier in the Kariba, our location, June 2024. Zimbabwe and Harare had no blackouts. Why? They had planned. They used their water properly. Their machines were running firmly. Ours here, they thought by getting this quick money and dismantling and paying Mamba collieries, uh, the bill they owed, that it was prudent. Now they've, they've sunk the economy. Zesco is such a scandal that it has sunk the economy. Our economy was supposed to grow at 4.7. It's growing at 1.2%, thanks to Zesco. Our economy is collapsed, and we have to look for fresh money to attend to the draft, thanks to Mutolo, Minister of Agriculture, who decided to export the maize despite the regular warnings. Our MPs did a fantastic job to remind Mtolo that honorable minister, you cannot be exporting maize when you know that we are in the middle, we are going to be in the middle of drought. And as late as November, December, when we are now suffering from that uh, dry spell, one of the worst dry spell, he was still exporting maize and justifying on the floor of the house that government will continue to uh, 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 export both maize and millimil. That is a government you have. And now they come to us. They said we should sympathize with them. The president says his drought is not his making and that uh, the, the opposition, we are being careless by not supporting his cause to, to deal with emergency. Yet he caused this crisis. He has not reigned in Zesco. No one at Zesco has been punished. Our economy has dropped down from 4.7% to 1.2% and it might go into negative. No one has been punished at Zesco. I bet even they are... MD and the board chairs will even have their contracts renewed. They will reward criminality. Even the imports that we are now, the country has to suffer these imports. They have to finally pay. It will be a huge bill that Zesco so, has so to. So what do you expect Zesco to do in this case if, if the debt that it, uh, it accumulated, which, well, uh, arguably, and not even arguably, uh, is again inherited from the patriotic front era, uh, we, we do understand that you left quite a lot in as far as uh, debt uh, around Zesco is concerned. So here is a government and you, and you are told you have to liquidate your own debt. You have to find means and ways of liquidating your own debt. We are highly indebted as a government. So uh, see what you can do. And that's the only option they have. Export, but there was expert export warning that you not have adequate water. You are going to have one of the worst droughts in 100 years. Our role was to conserve that water. And remember, we have power stations on the same river, on, on both Kafue and Zambezi. We have various power stations, from the one in Livingstone. Uh, 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 by the way, the one in Livingstone, which uses uh, uh, Vic Victoria Force w uh, water, again, a prudent decision must be made. Do we need to continue generating, keeping that station open? Or we allow, we close that channel of water and allow the water to flow so that your Victoria Falls can have water. You can make that prudence decision because the income from tourism is also very, very good. But of course, they won't tell you that story. They will not tell you that Victoria Falls a, a power station gets water from Zambezi just above the Victoria Falls. That's why the Zimbabwean side has, still has a water force. Ours do not have because our water is going to generate power in the Victoria Force power station, which is below the gorge. We have various uh, 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 power stations on Zambezi River. We ought to be prudent with our water. And we were warned by the managers of this water, 
Zambezi River Authority. But we've been very careless with that. Like I gave an example of Kariba. We could have started for one year a uh, load shedding of three hours. And then there's an issue of export. This government won't stop the exports. You saw Zimbabwe, I mean, you saw Botswana saying their industry is kept alive mainly by imports from Zambia. So someone has sacrificed the Zambian economy to keep the Botswana economy alive. What carelessness is that? What criminal negligence is that? And who's paying for that? If you are the, a proper leader at State House, this is what he will do. He will deal with the issues at Zesco. He would fire the managing director for those careless decisions. He would dissolve the Zesco board. He would call for experts to advise him what we do now. And uh, remember, I've, I've just published on my page a fresh warning because by August, we're told that after El Nino, there was a weather phenomenon called La Nina. Yeah. And we're going to have adequate rain and we're going to have probably then adequate power yeah. and we're going to have good harvest. But now, both an organization called Feminine Early Warning System, it's run by USAID, it talks about feminine occurrence and it watches the weather very prudently. And an Australian firm have revised their positive uh, 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 focus on Southern Africa. And they're saying we might go into a second drought. It may not be severe as the El Nino one, because there'll be La Nina, yeah. but we may still be in a drought mechanism. If there's any time you want experts on food security, if there's any time you need proper uh, advice, technical advice on power and, and, and your power generation, it is now. But as usual, like they did last year, our friends will not bother about these reports. They'll continue. Here, our country is collapsing. Our businesses are collapsing. Uh, Zach, I don't know how you are even surviving because you have to run this station on gensets. Adverts are few because the economy is doing very badly. How you are running this station live? And this is the same to all businesses, small and medium enterprises across the country are collapsing. But someone at Zesco has decided that the exports to Botswana must go on uninterrupted. And Botswana, even as uh, the audacity to be on their rooftop and saying our economy is doing very well. Our economy, despite the El Nino drought crisis in Southern Africa, despite these challenges, we have power from Zambia and South Africa. South Africa is nuclear. South Africa is core. Okay, coal doesn't really need a lot of water to generate power. We have hydro based on water, purely on water up to 90%. But we are still exporting to Botswana. We are still exporting to Namibia. We would rather keep those economies alive than our own economy. What criminal decision is that? Then the president says we need to support him on these measures. How can we support a criminal enterprise? How can we just tell us? And then on imports, for example, uh, ZNS supplies millimil at 230 quarter because the market price is, you know how high it is. It's between 350 and 400, 450, depending on when, where you are. So a subsidy from ZNS must help. But ZNS will not tell you where they're getting their maize. They will not tell you. There were allegations that they were importing finished product from South Africa, and documents began to fly around. They had to charge Thomas Ziambo for breaking that story. Instead of attending to the complaints and the documents that emerged that ZNS under cabinet office was going to import for the next 10 months, millimil, attend to that issue. Don't, don't rush to punish journalists that are just demanding for the truth to be told. During the Aflo toxin crisis. They arrested our Secretary General, Rafael Nakachinda, for merely calling out the poison that was on the market, for merely causing, calling for, uh, for accountability, for demanding from the authorities to establish where the maize came from, how it found itself in the value chain, and how our people were consuming these toxic substances. He was arrested. That is to shut debate about such important matters. 
So we 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 have difficulties. But 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 why would you want to? I mean, why would you call it to shut debate? And also, um, what's the debate for if there is action that the government of the day is taking on any matter uh, 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 that that you raise? For example, on the you are live right now. I'm live on many pages. Well, I'm, I'm telling yeah, you, 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 Zach, when, Zach, just a minute, Zach. Where are you alive just, right Zach, now? Just Zach. Let's make that very clear. Yeah. Let's, make, let's not mislead our why, why didn't you? Why didn't this page correct the information that it was not UPMD thugs? In, instead, it was the family of the deceased. No, we didn't have the facts, first of all. And first of all, we didn't no, communicate but it, that. But, but, first but of after all, having the facts... This should have been uh, corrected or brought down. No, I, th I think it was corrected. We it saw on ZMB. This is still here? Oh, uh, on, on, on the you, page? You may have to tell the administrators of those pages. But what I can tell you is our material are posted and cross-posted. But, 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 right but now, I'm on 5FM yes. live. Just a minute. Yeah. 5FM Facebook. I'm live on that page. I'm not an administrator of that page. I don't control but that But you page. are in charge of publicity. And the, and, and the fact that Patriotic Front is attached to all this these lies you have a right to correct this because we at the end of the day, we issued the formal statement of, you as chairman of publicity your name is is dented i mean because now you're being called propagandist oh no 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 it's, uh, you know what it's, I mean? it's, it's welcome and, it's and, welcome and, and all these are adding up no no no, no. It's, why it's, then it's, do we have your page reporting that it reported that the UPND cadres ransacked the funeral house no my now page you have the right facts. my page you can't just a minute. That post. Yeah, just a minute. It remains my, misinformation as, yeah, as we speak. Yeah, my page has never reported that fact. My page never rendered video. Either Emmanuel Mwamba page or my profile never rendered story. And because, first of all, I was familiar with the facts around the, the, the attacks on uh, the Kambulis. I haven't I, I had an inkling that they are complaints. I am not aware of who finally attacked the tents, brought down the tents, and ransacked the food. I, it may not be the family. It may not be the family. We but still what don't facts, have. What facts do you have as of today? As of today, the family was complaining and was demanding that the casket must be taken so to the farmhouse. So this was the family? Yes, which, which it was the family. No, I don't know. I can't say that. Zach, I'll be speculating. So it was wrong I to did. name the UPND cutters as well? Because of course, if they were not the ones. I did. We did it. Zach, let, me, let us make it very clear. Yeah. Our press statement is still in public domain. You can read it. It focused on the attack of President uh, Edgar Lungu's convoy, where we had sufficient facts and evidence. That's the only one where we issued a formal statement. All the speculations around the barrio yeah. site, I'm, I'm around... Made to believe, I'm made to believe most of these patriotic front pages authentic one is where you are live right now which also a day ago carried this same story that we are referring to uh, they the, are under your department no, or no, your, no. Your, your, the, your committee the, 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 the patriotic the front party. the patriotic front doesn't have an official page okay by virtue that people might carry my live coverage they carry it for purposes of news you understand how social media works uh, people post and cross post material I gave you an example that I'm currently live on, um, on uh, 5FM. I don't control 5FM. I'm probably live on Grindstone. I don't control Grindstone. This is wherever the news is, there's live coverage, there is interest. The news sites themselves who pick this material and will be live. For us, our facts remain the same. We regret that an old video on the attack of President Daka in the HLMA was when he was in opposition where he was attacked in Serenje, was attached to our story two hours later. It was two hours later. Our story of the attack on Edgar Lungo was standing for two hours before the video was attached to our story to show that Edgar Lungo's uh, 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 video on his attack was the one. As soon as I became aware of that video, first of all, I saw the vehicles. None of those vehicles are in Edgar Lungu's convoy. And because I follow politics in this country so much, I remember that this is a Serenje video where President Akainde Ichilema's entourage, I think they were coming from a filling station, I don't know where they were coming from, Pika or wherever they were coming from, were attacked by suspected PF cadres in 2021. And I quickly wrote on all blogs where I am, guys, this video, this is, don't attach it to our story. 
It's not the video for President Edgar Lungu. We don't have a video where President Edgar Lungu is being attacked yet because our media was at the cemetery and the church and they didn't follow him when he went to the lodge. But maybe those that were by, by standing by might have taken a video and it may emerge. But drop that video. Of course, the opposition, I mean, the ruling party and the UPND have taken interest in that matter to say we propagated lies that we showed an odd video. No. The story we issued was about the attack on Edgar Lungu. And the story had been distributed for two hours, if you notice the timelines. The video emerges two hours later. Maybe we were set up. Maybe someone from the ruling party says, ah, with the excitement of Mwambachen Tubatumine, we'll see. And maybe we fell in the trap. And now my story, our story, that Edgar Lungo has been attacked, was now being circulated together with the uh, old video, thereby undermining the attack that Edgar Lungo was attacked. Remember, it's very embarrassing for the state that you should have a former president being stoned in the presence of the police. It's a very bad story for them. So their media have shifted attention to the old video to attempt to make us that we are telling lies. Edgar Lungu was not even attacked because the video is old. You see the thin narrative is to undermine the report that Edgar Lungu has done to the police. We have reported to Chingola police station. We have identified six of the nine attackers. We have identified the three vehicles that were moving in. And we've given the police and the docket has formally been opened. What we expect is for the Minister of Home Affairs to immediately say they will investigate the matter, to immediately investigate the police that were present at the time, to immediately establish why they allowed those youths who we have identified and we have named and we have named their vehicles and now a Toyota Corolla and the Mark X that were on the scene. And of the nine suspects, we've named six. We hope that the police can move in, but they would like to peddle the lie that our report to the police, the attack on Edgar Lungu is not true because the story was accompanied by old video footage. No, I think let us separate the two. There was an attack on the former president. There was an attack, an unaccepted dastard act, criminal act done against the former president. And that matter must be pursued. This is the Tuesday edition of the burning issue here on the Happy World of Five FM Radio. We are also live on uh, other platforms and we're live on uh, Tuta FM radio and that is uh, based in Mansa on 90.7 FM covering the rest of Rokula province. We are also live uh, in Central Province covering to be precise on Spice FM that is on 91.1 here in Osaka 89.9 and the surrounding areas as well. Remember we are also live on our Facebook page that's 5 FM radio Zambia. I will be uh, taking phone calls for you to have an interaction with our guest this morning. Our guest is Ambassador Emmanuel Mwamba, who is the Patriotic Front Chairperson for Information and Publicity. And uh, we'll take your phone or your phone calls on 0955-221515. Uh, let's take this one. Good morning and welcome to the Benning Issue. How are you today? I'm, off, I'm okay. Uh, please tell us your name and where you're calling us from. We are talking to the Kawitin, 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 Kawitin,
Tuata Shabam Sond. Tuata Shabam Sond. Mkwe. Right. Uh, 0955-221515 is the number you're calling us on. Uh, we've got uh, another caller. Uh, this one is uh, uh, Madame Mumbipiri on the line. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Jack. How are you today? Honorable MCC Mumbipiri, Mwashbuke and Mayo. Indita. Yeah, 
Natasha. Uh, Natasha, thank you very much, uh, Ma Madam Mumbi, for uh, for calling through. Uh, let's see if we can take um, uh, some more calls. I'll take some more, and then you can respond. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. I'm fine, thank you. Welcome to the Benning Issues. Hour. Where are you calling us from? Thank you, Mr. Chikubabi. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming through. Uh, 0955, I'll take one more, and then I can give you an opportunity to respond. 0955, uh, Good morning, uh, and welcome to the Benning Issue. Your name and where are you calling us from? Your name again? Hello? Hello? Can, you can we get your name? Can we get your name first? We didn't get your name, though. Well, um, we didn't get his name, but uh, we'll take that uh, if you are okay with responding to it. Thank you very much uh, for calling. Um, maybe I give you an opportunity to respond. Uh, yeah, first of all, uh, our brother Msonda from Kabwe says, why is government, you know, just focused on the former president and the patriotic front instead of attending to hunger, unemployment, poverty, load shedding, why aren't they focused on bigger issues, but they're focused um, on uh, President Lungu? I think that's self-explanatory. This is a jittery government. It has no faith in itself. It has failed. And they think that by diverting attention to attacking Emmanuel Mwamba or Edgar Lungu or Mumbipiri, the Zambians will not debate the hunger they have or the lack of uh, electricity they do not have. You know. Um, my dear sister, Mumbipiri, usually wherever she calls, she condemns this business of transporting suspects to other jurisdictions. And she quotes the Nelson Mandela rule. And people don't understand why she's so passionate about it. I was also just talking about the matter of Elizabeth Mayomayo from Chingola. She's in her bedroom. She issues a voice note to a, a Chingola page. Why bring her to Lusaka? Why charge her in Lusaka? The Mandela rule is, um, is a rule that comes from the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crimes. And to protect prisoners and detainees, it has issued standard, minimum standards, 
minimum rules and minimum standards and treatment that both prisoners and detainees should face. And one of the key ones is, is the one that Honorable Mumpiri always quotes everywhere, the, 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 the Article 57, which talks about that you cannot transport uh, suspects away from their family structure, away from where they are. If possible, prosecute them in an area of the jurisdiction where the alleged crime were committed. Even in this country, remember both government lost the cases for uh, Chilufiatari in Lukulu and for, uh, for Rafael Nakachinda in Solwezi. We simply made an application, even our laws do not allow. If you are a resident in Lusaka, you committed your alleged crime in Lusaka, you can be taken to uh, Solwezi. The way the UPND have been doing, what they do is they will send a complaint. Like why me currently is being prosecuted in Kalomo because the UPND raised a complaint in Kalomo and why me was taken there. And uh, there is another young man that was jailed for, for, for some months again taken to Kaoma. All those processes are illegal. This government is just setting themselves up for more payments that will be done to these accused persons. Because both the international law and our local law do not allow what the UPND is doing of transporting suspects to these areas. The last call was uh, from um, uh, Mr. Chukubawe. Um, no, second last. Mr. Chukubawe, I think, was cataloging his complaint. But let me go to the last one. That says, why don't we give President Lungu security? I stand that the former president is entitled to state security. You've seen Donald Trump. is campaigning. He has the biggest state security ever, even beating that of the sitting president, especially after elevating the level of threats and risks around him. That's how it's supposed to be. This is a former president. He's campaigning against the current president, but the state have proceeded to provide him with bulletproof uh, stages, you know, cubicles, and they've attached a number of highly specialized personnel to protect him. You may remove his benefits, but leave the state security there. I agree with my dear brother, Honorable Mao Sampa, has been very insistent on this matter. And there have been other voices that you could be engaged, doesn't matter what the law provides. This is the only surviving former president we have. We may not, uh, uh, we may not agree that he has come back into politics and is currently the PF president. But you can't take the, that away that he's Zambia's sixth president and is our only surviving former president. So why are you denying him state security? Why are you allowing UPND cadres to attack him in the manner they did in the presence of the police? So I agree with you there. So uh, let's take some more calls in this case uh, on 0955 Call us back. Uh, we lost that particular one. Good morning. Good morning to you. Uh, your name and where are you calling us from? Out to Ashbukashan by name.
Thank you very much uh, uh, for coming through. Uh, we'll take some more on zero nine five five two two one five one five. Good morning. Tawo kama wakabu ino zinyanche dimba. Yeo. Atima ndani? Ukembe, Romu Nsanje, please go ahead. Na ukam, Honorable Nsanje, mribu anji. Uh, one more, and then we'll, I'll, I'll give you an opportunity to respond on zero nine five five two two one five one five. Uh, good morning. Oh, we lost the callers back. If you can on zero nine five five two two one five one five. Uh, good morning. Not too bad. Thank you. Your name and where are you calling us from? Mansa uh, Brian. Please go ahead, Brian. I need to come to you quickly and say, can you forgive me? And we walk in 
one way, not what is happening. Today, the people, the Europeans, when they come out, things will be another way again. So, if a state is state, we need to go into a state, the state. But otherwise, I can say this is what I find to share. Thank people. you. Thank you very much for, for coming through, Brian. Uh, Mr. Momba, you can react uh, to uh, the concerns. Yeah. Uh, I agree with um, the first caller that talked about load shedding and uh, how it has affected our country and how people that have loans, their businesses, they are literally collapsing. And he says the UPND promised that there will be peace, that there will be development, that there will be no load shedding. Um, but, and he was wondering how GBM, who helped take the UPND to areas where UPND was not strong, Chimbakambuili, who helped take UPND where they were not, they're the ones that are now suffering on this. And he says he's going to court, can be placed on the UPND government. And he's right. Chimbakambuili was jailed for five months over hate speech in Kasama, alleged hate speech. He appealed against that case. But what is surprising is the appeal by the DPP, who are demanding a longer sentence against Chimbakambuili. When the tragic and fatal accident occurred, Shimbakambuili was going to high court. The high court had already heard the appeal within a period of one week and was going for judgment. And his brothers went therefore to support him because it wasn't a normal hearing. He was going for judgment. And um, I have seen even while I was at the funeral, a lot of people put the blame on government that they are palpable, they are complicit in this death because they are trying people in places where they shouldn't be trying and they are very vengeful in the manner they are applying the law. Like in this case, the DPP applied for a longer sentence than the one that was given by the magistrate court of five months. Our appeal has, has been very consistent. Follow the law. Follow the rule of law. Don't take Nakachinda to Solwezi. Don't take Chilfiatayali to Lukulu. Don't take Elizabeth from Chingola to Lusaka. Try them in their areas. Don't manufacture complaints of UPND cadres in Kalomo. You take people and they are jailed there without family, without party, or any friend support, and they are isolated. Uh, people may, might even forget about the young man, Waini, that his trial has been uh, going on and uh, in Livingstone. This is someone from Muflira. He issued this video, he's a vlogger. He issued this video in Muflira. Why is he being tried in Livingstone? And like Honorable Mumbipiri clearly stated that this is against international rules, the Nelson Mandela rule under the United Nations treatment of prisoners and detainees, that you have to allow the suspects to be in the jurisdiction, especially where their family is. Don't unless you have a proper, proper reason to remove them from that jurisdiction. The last one, our dear brother was talking about uh, uh, that we have to be good to one another. He says, if the PF did you bad, don't return bad with evil. Be better, and is right. And the same things that the UPND are doing to us, doing to opposition, who will likely visit them when they leave power. And he says, when will this cycle end? And I agree with him. We are celebrating a dam on Jubilee. We are 60 years as a country. It should be an opportunity to reset the button, to start afresh, do clean politics, do politics that they unite the country, that foster national development, do politics that are not tribal, that are not regional, away abandon corruption, abandon all these petty issues that we've been preoccupied with in the last 60 years. Can't we, and this is now a button that is changing from one generation to another. The President Akainde Echirima will likely be the last president that was born before independence to rule us. Going forward, we will likely have young people that were born after independence to be our presidents. Why can't we do our politics totally different? And this is a call for this young man. And for me, this is momentous, especially that we're in Independence Week. We are two days away from commemorating our 60th anniversary, our Damon Jubilee. 
we've expressed disappointment that this government didn't do a series of events to demonstrate how uh, important this event is. But we understand they have no money. The funding is little. They, they, they are barely breathing. Salaries are coming late. If it were not the intervention that they've received from drought, uh, maybe the economy, we don't know where it would be. Um, so they put importance to unnecessary things. Edgar Lungu is appearing in the Supreme Court, in the, on the Supreme Court grounds there in the Constitutional Court. They will bring 1,000 police officers, numerous vehicles to transport that, very heavily armed uh, personnel to encircle the entire place. It becomes a no-go area. Why so much money? Why allow the police to, to spend money they do not have? When we're in uh, Chingola, again, you see a huge deployment of the police. Totally unnecessary. Here, a former president is being attacked, and they're standing hands akimbo, ignoring the attack and the risks that have been put under the president. Uh, so we ought to do things differently. We need to demonstrate that we've learned from our past that we have to abandon our past mistakes and forge ahead. You cannot be, have a country perpetually begging whose economy is in foreign hands, whose wealth is in foreign hands, and we are beggars and bystanders to our own, own economy, to our own livelihoods, and we remain poor. Not because we are poor as a country, but we are one of the wealthiest countries in the world, yet we remain poor because of policy and petty politics engaged in arrests after arrests, engaged in brutalizing the opposition, reducing the democratic space, abusing parliament, abusing the judiciary. We need to reflect and start afresh. Well, uh, 0955, I'll take the last batch of calls uh, on 0955 I'll take the last four calls. But uh, uh, before we do that, I would like your reaction on the fact that um, uh, uh, Patriotic Front faction president in Mal Sampa has warned the former president, Edgar Lungu, not to masquerade as PF president. And, and this is, is, is uh, obviously a statement that we've heard before, but also it uh, brings about a lot of questions because at some point Everybody else thought that the two had reconciled, and obviously there is there is a plan to save the Patriotic Front. Alas, it looks like uh, it's even more divided. Um, we are determined to restore the status of the Patriotic Front to its original status before State House interfered. We are determined that uh, the Patriotic Front should belong to its legitimate owners. We have always stated publicly that Mao Sampa is not PF president. It doesn't matter how many certificates they give him, the state gives him. It doesn't matter how many certificates that they give to Robert Chavinga. The two are not PF presidents, they are not part of the PF leadership. In fact, at the time they were committing these illegalities, they were both suspended. They know our PF laws, they know the PF statutes, they know the PF constitution, and they know that what was done was illegal. Just because the state is helping them, doesn't make them. Um, the party is about our people. Our people remain loyal to the leadership of President Edgar Lungu and all of us you saw in Chingola, you've seen wherever Edgar Lungu goes, the party remains very intact. The legal status might say otherwise. It's like your house, Zach, you go to Europe and you come back and you find someone is masquerading as the owner. They even have title deeds. It doesn't take away that that's your house and that you didn't sell it. What remains in between is a process to restore the original status. Where you go to court, you demonstrate that this is your property. You demonstrate that the change of titles was fraudulent and that there, there are, there's a, a huge attempt to steal this property that belongs to you by these masqueraders. This is what has happened to the Patriotic Front. The Patriotic Front it remains the Patriotic Front. There's been an attempt by the state to destabilize the opposition, to destabilize 
uh, the Patriotic Front by taking away its legitimacy and handing out cert certificates and uh, office bearers to some other people. That fight will continue. But if you believe in democracy, you believe in the rule of law, and if you believe in the multi-party character of our country, what, what has been done to the PF is a criminal offense, and it goes to undermining our very constitution and the multi-party character of our country, and it should not be accepted. We'll keep on fighting. Yeah, let me take the last batch of calls. Uh, good morning. How are you today? Fine, thank you. Your name is Where are you calling us from? Mr. Mwanza from Cabo. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Mwanza from Cabo. Thank you, Mr. Mwanza. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mwanza, for, for coming through. 0955 uh, That's the number you're calling us on. Uh, we'll take uh, another one. Good morning. Mkwaima Bombashan. Ativanishina. Ativania Yakubala. Clovis.
Uh, let me take uh, the last two on 0955 That's the number you're calling us on. Our guest is Ambassador Emmanuel Mwamba, who is the Patriotic Front uh, Chairperson for Information and Publicity. Please call us uh, on that number if you'd like to be a part of uh, uh, the conversation. And again, the number you're calling us on is 0955 uh, Good morning. Morning to you. How are you? Indeed, uh, long, long time. I'm saying long time. Welcome. It is also my deliberate uh, I mean, intention here to thank all members of the PF for having visited that kind of leadership. You know, from the time the UPND came to power, they came on the platform of vengeance, which is most unfortunate in leadership. We are actually members of political parties in the opposition who have had strange pronouncements. They cannot hold their rally. For the first time, for, for the first time in the history of this country, to hear such kind of pronouncements, that this party cannot hold their rallies. Very strange things that we are seeing, that we are hearing, is most unfortunate. Because, as you said, HH is the seventh president, and he has seen all the presidents that we've talked about here. He saw them when they were in power, but he has not been able to copy certain good things from our party president. He has not been able to do that. He's someone we all see as someone who thinks knows it all. However, my contribution is that the honorable member, I think, let us actually hold on to our party, the PF, under UCA. Let us not fear these things. I, I, I think that them from statement. Latvians are now more than so, uh, a few years ago. They know what will happen in this country, and they know what, what is going to happen in the next election. Because it's not anything that can talk to anyone now. Everybody see what is happening with this political party. They are strange things happening in this political party that they were actually pushing to say. Even in the most remote part of this country, people are pushing in this party. Finally, what I want to say is, are you not surprised, Mr. Mwamba, uh, that for any case before our courts of law that is connected to the president or where President Hakai has been mentioned, this victory is always delivered for him. What is happening to our courts? What are these judges for? Have they all been involved? It is shameful. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, senior citizen uh, uh, Fano Mwangala. Uh, I'm taking the last call now on 0955-221515. And uh, uh, good morning. I'm very well, brother Chisha. How are you? Great. Very well, brother Chisha. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yes, thank yeah. you very much. <clears throat> Let me start with Brother Chisha and answer an earlier questions of Mingalato and uh, the Electoral Commission of Zambia. He has pointed out this is the first time that the institution is being led by a non-judge. This one has always been led by um, a judicial officer, in many cases, a Supreme Court judge. You know, from Judge Walia up to the last Justice Chulu, they all have been judges. This Mangala Zalumis is the first non sitting justice that is presiding over. West Hill, she's a non UPND cadre. Uh, and our dear brother, uh, McDonald Chpenzi, well known UPND cadre, they are in the commission. And he's saying, What are you doing about it? Aren't you worried that elections are pre rigged? We are sounding warning that. Uh, President Dakainde Chilema is very determined to actually complete the process of rigging elections now. President Lungu, in his last address, talked about the lack of transparency in voter registration, NRC issuance, secret NRC issuance, and the people manning it. Then you have the Electoral Reform Technical Committee, a body that should be appointed by the president. Mangala Zalumis has appointed one. She doesn't have powers. She wants the Electoral Reform Technical Committee to look at laws and the constitution that are required, clauses that are required for amendments. What powers does she have? What mandate does she have? She is a creature of the constitution. She can't reform herself. That's a role of Zambians, either through the president or through the Zambia Law Development Commission. They're the ones under the law. The president can invoke the Inquiries Act to attempt then to inquire into the challenges facing the electoral reform, I mean, the ele electoral um, uh, commission of Zambia. It is not up to the office orders to do that. What Mangala Zalumis is doing is illegal. She cannot reform that organization. She's a mere employee of that organization. I've never seen an employee begin, a gardener begin to pass around that I don't like the offense. I don't like the door where it is. I think I'm going to change the door. Iwe, nweani. That's what Mangala Zalumis is doing. What she's doing under the ERTC is totally illegal. And he has asked a fundamental question. Clearly, that uh, President Nagai Ndechilema is determined to pre-rig the elections even before we have these elections. What are we doing about it? I would throw that question to all of us in the opposition. That what should we do to ensure that we guarantee free and fair elections to guarantee that we'll have peace and security before, during, and after elections. You have Nelly Muti, the Speaker of the National Assembly, who is also attempting to begin to reform the Constitution under what she's calling non-contentious clauses. Who is Nelly Muti to attempt to amend the Constitution? That's not our role. This is a role of the people through the executive who should either appoint a constitutional reform committee or technical committee who should then recommend through a widespread a consultative process you come up with clauses that should be amended. The manner they want to amend the constitution through ECZ and through parliament is totally illegal, it's illegitimate and it should be stopped. It should be stopped. That's a call to ask the opposition. Don't come and cry in 2026. See what is happening to your register, 
to the regulations and to the law now and stop it now. Don't come and cry foul in 2026. It may be too late. Mr. Mwanza from Kawe um, said, you people, you the politicians, the very thing that was happening under the PF is also now happening under the UPND. You never learn. You are just one and the same people. Mr. Mwanza from Kawe, I agree with you. We never learn from our past mistakes. Probably it's time, like Donald Trump says, to drain the swamp, foster a new leadership so that people can look at what Zambians want and abandon this vengeful approach to politics. What you have is Hichilema paying back. Can you imagine dismissing judges who passed a sentence against you in 2016? You dismiss them 10 years later when you have the powers. What kind of vengeance is this? What kind of actions are these? Is that in the interest of our country? Can you question the legitimate of a, I mean, the qualification of a sitting judge? Can you? Where was the appointment? What was Parliament ratifying? What happens to all the judgments they made? What ridiculous and lawless approach is this? You know, Clovis from Tendere says also that look, the country is in a crisis. Why are you concentrating on Edgar Lungu and on the patriot front? And he's right. He says, why don't you look at the price of millimil? Because our people can't afford it. And he's right. Um, senior citizen, Honorable Fanu Mwangala, thank you for the commendations. And he has also expressed concern that UPND and the president, Akainde Echilema, just determined to foster vengeance and dictatorship. And um, is urged as a patriotic front to hold on to the patriotic front and to forge alliances to ensure that we are strong in 2026 to stop the re-election of President Hakainde Ichilema. I think with those um, few remarks, I think I have attended to yeah. all the concerns. Yeah. And your concluding remarks. Zach, thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. We commiserate with you and the media under the circumstances you are working where you have to operate 24 hours and yet we only have power three hours. Currently, Zesco is exporting power to Botswana in the day, you can only have power in the night, and they issued a statement to that effect. They don't care about the state of our economy. Zambians will only have power in the night after they are done exporting power to Botswana and Namibia. And that's the type of government you have. So I'd like to thank you for the opportunity you gave us to express ourselves, our sincere condolences, official condolences to Honorable Shimbakambuili on the loss of his two dear brothers, Pastor Mtale Kambuili and Eoda Mwamba Kambuili. We are with you as a family and we wish you God's strength. To the people of Zambia, um, we need prayers and prayers and prayers. The season we are in is terrible. You have a government that doesn't look at your needs. It's looking at destroying the opposition, arresting the opposition. It's not concerned about your welfare, your lack of water, your lack of electricity, your lack of food. They're not concerned about that and they've demonstrated that in their budget, in their rhetoric, in their programs, and in their actions, the food uh, for work program fostering, they should learn from the push program that used to happen when we had that one of the worst droughts in 2003. The push program that was fostered was across political parties. It was not a UPND issue. We have seen in townships and complaints where only the beneficiaries are not members of the community, but first they ought to declare their loyalty to the UPND. That is very sad. That little money should help to go and affect. In Salata Isala, the drought didn't choose. The rain didn't say this is a PF home will put water. This is a UPND home will not put water. It was across. Everyone is affected. And we should de depoliticize those programs, remove partisan conduct, and allow our communities to benefit. Um, to members of the Patriotic Front, remember this is a difficult period for us, but we need to remain united in the manner we've remained united so far, despite the consistent and relentless attack on the leadership of President Lungu, on ourselves, the arrests, the harassment, the imprisonments, the long detentions. Let us endure. Zambia will rescue this country. And lastly, let us reset that button. Zambia is now 60 years old. We should behave as such. We can't conduct our politics in a vengeful manner. 
in the manner we are doing. We ought to foster peace, security, and national development. We ought to promote democracy and tolerance. We ought to allow the media to thrive. We ought to abandon laws such as the Cyber Security and Cyber Crimes Act, reform the Public Order Act, reform all these laws that are taking us back, and restore the economy in Zambian hands. You cannot develop if your entire economy is with foreigners. They are developing their countries. God bless you. God bless you, Zach, and God bless our country. Shalom, shalom. Thank you very much, and God bless you too. Thank you very much to our partner radio stations, of course, to FM carrying, uh, for carrying this program live, and uh, Spice FM as well.